Today, the topic I'm going to talk about that is support vector machine, and、um, I will cover all these topic. The first one, I'm going to give a bit very brief introduction about what support vector machine it is, and then、so、we will focus on the linear support vector machine. That means we will talk about the linearly separable case. So we assume that the data set is linearly separable, and We will extend this idea into the nonlinear case. That means when the data set, they are, when the data set is nonlinearly separable, and then how do we design a, a linear support machine to deal with that? That means in that case we have some error to happen, and later on, extend this linear support machine into the nonlinear one using the kernel concept. Yeah. So up to now, because support machine that is a by that is a、uh, binary classifier that is either plus one or minus one that is two classes, and then so we are going to extend this idea into the multi-class support machine that is we are able to deal with the case that which has more than two classes. So the introduction about the support machine. When we talk about the support machine, you will just find out that、uh, it works in a very similar concept of linear machine. That is, we are talking about the linear discriminant function, but with the consideration of the margin. I will talk about this margin later on. The margin that is, we are going to maximize the maximize the space between data set, and then that is the margin, and then、uh, we can extend the linear machine into. A nonlinear one. That is, we are going to map the data set from low dimension into a high dimension space using the kernel function. That is something very similar to the activation function we talk about in the neural network. Yeah. So we turn the linear support machine into nonlinear support machine using the kernel function. So, as I said,、um, support machine that is a Binary classifier. We can handle only two classes, so that's why we need to have. We are going to use the support machine as a building block if we are going to handle a multi-class classification problem. We are going to combine a number of binary classifier to form a multi-class classifier. Yeah, and when we design the support machine, and then so. We are going to talk about the optimal way. That means we have a kind of optimization theory behind in order to tell you what kind of connection weight or the weight right here we are going to select in order to construct the support machine. Yeah. So this optimal weight will be something to do with the margin. We will talk about this later on. So as I said, support machine. That is based on the linear discriminant function, but on top of that, we are going to consider an optimal solution. When we talk about the optimal solution, we are going to define an optimal problem, optimization problem. One of the requirement for the optimization problem, when we talk about support machine, that is the margin, as well as how much, how many errors we are going to accept. That means. When we talk about support machine, we have some way to control how much error we are going to accept. Yeah, so we have a hyperparameters to control. Yeah, I will talk about this later on. When comparing to the neural network, you will just find out that support machine that is a single layer.、Uh, I mean, a single output, multiple input neural network. But those connection weight. Actually, they are achieved through the optimization theory, yeah. And the similar thing that is in neural network, we use the activation function to、uh, map the lower dimensional feature space into a hyper dimensional feature space in order to deal with the linearity. And then the same happens in support machine as well. We used kernel function. This kernel function that is. The concept is very similar to the activation function, yeah. And then,、um, if we are talking about the advantages over neural network, because、uh, the support machine that is very a simple structure, so that、uh, because it is a single output, multiple input 
three-layer structure compared with the deep neural network compared with the multi-layer neural network the structure is simpler and because of the optimization theory we use to optimize or to maximize the margin so the subtractor machine that is less susceptible susceptible to overfitting yeah because we are we we have the weight how do we control the margin as well as we have the way how to control the errors okay and now we have some basic idea about what suppressor machine it is and then so we are going to talk a little bit technical details what ingredients we have to design a suppressor machine okay and now i start with the definition of a two cast classification problem that means i focus on the two cases that means as i said binary classifier can only tell you that is either it is it belongs to class one or class two yeah so in order to design a suppressor machine we need to have the training examples so i put all the training example in this data set x and then so we have the sample point x1 x2 up to xn capital letter n that is the number of training samples we have okay so that means before you design a supporter machine you need to collect some training samples for the design yeah associated with each samples and until so we have a label this label that is we use y1 for x1 y2 for x2 each data point each samples will have one label this label that is either minus one or plus one yeah so two cases by default we use minus one and plus one actually if you do not use minus one plus one say minus 10 plus 10 it works as well but anyway by default we use minus one plus one okay to denote class one and class two okay so for example this sample x1 that is this is plus one plus one and then this is minus one yeah according to the characteristic of the application we are going to deal with and then so our objective that is based on this data set we have two cases we would like to design a hybrid plane that is fx that is an unknown hybrid plane so when it when when we set it to zero and then we can draw a line yeah we can draw a line with some data points right here this is another cast so this is the fx equals zero yeah so that means when all the sample when all the points lying in this fx it will give you the value of zero above this line that is say plus one below this line that is minus one cast okay and now this diagram illustrates better the idea that is when we have this training samples s x1 y1 so and so for example in this case that is we have a two-dimensional samples x1 and x2 note that this x1 x2 they are not this x1 x1 it is a vector yeah so when it is in both phase it is a vector for example i call this is both phase x1 within which we have two elements that is the x1 coordinate as well as x2 coordinate so corresponding to x1 we will have x1 1 x1 2 the first subscript that is the i sample the next subscript that is corresponding to the um the first element and then the second subscript that is the second element and so on if we have more than two dimension two um elements and then we can extend it to a hyper dimensional space yeah say so when we talk about x2 maybe this is we call this is x2 and then so we will have x2 1 x2 2 two elements because we have a two dimensional data set and corresponding to x1 we will have y1 that is plus one if i assign plus one to all this lay all these samples and then so maybe this is called uh, x 
and the last one so we will have the same rotation a vector x and 1 x and 2 with the y and that is minus 1 if we give the label for these samples to be minus 1 yeah so that means plus 1 or minus 1 that is according to our assignment that means we can assign this group of samples to be minus 1 and then this one these ones to be plus one so it is up to us but for example i just use plus one for these classes minus one for these uh another class yeah okay so now this one that is f x equals zero and then this is the first design this is the second design yeah for both of them we are able to have two options actually we can have many options right here we can construct many hyperplane which can separate these two classes and then which design is the best and then that is what we are talking about using the subtractor machine concept now from the previous figures from the previous figure we know that we can have a lot of hyperplane right here which can separate two classes now the question that is how do we decide the optimal one and what does it mean by the optimal one yeah so that is how do we pick fx so that the solution the hyperplane is the optimal one so we need to set up the problem by providing some specification or by providing some requirement so the first one that is no errors that means this hyperplane right here can separate these two classes 100% no misclassification yeah so this is the first requirement the second requirement that is the distance or the margin between the subtract machine that is maximized okay so the problem that is what is a separator if we know what is a separator and then so we can start from there to design the margin yeah okay so i'm going to talk about that in the next slide and then now um i'm going to point out that although i mentioned in the beginning we have to use the optimization theory to design the separator machine but when the data set is small or simple and then so we are able to obtain the svm graphically and then so we have to do it in the tutorial yeah and now Take a look at this one. We focus on these two requirements, as I mentioned in the previous slides right here. No errors, maximize the margin. Okay, this is the thing. Now, we have two options. This, this line, that is the first option, fx equals zero. And then this line, that is the second option of the hyperplane f2x equals zero. And now take a look at this one. These dot, maybe I just call it plus one. These dot, these courses, we call this is the minus one. That means all these dot, they have the label plus one belong, they belong to the same class. This class label, that is plus one. I assign plus one to these samples. Yeah, and then for the causes for these samples, I assign the label to be minus one to make it two classes. So this is the y i for this group of samples. This is the y i for these groups of samples. Yeah, okay. And now take a look at this two options f one x f two x equals zero it means that every single point along this line if you're going to substitute it into this function it will give you a zero value the same apply to this one any point along this dash line it will give you f2 x equals zero yeah so when i talk about this point that is the x2 and x1 value right here okay so these two options we can achieve low errors because all these plus one samples and minus one sample can be separately 100% correctly using F1 or F2. Okay, and now no misclassification. The next one that is the distance. 
the margin between the nearest support machine should be maximized. And now that is based on F1x. I'm going to shift this line parallelly up to this point, which first touch the samples. Okay. In this case, it happens that we have one, two, three. These three points, and then these three points, we define that to be the separator. Yeah, they are the separators. Now we do the same when we, with respect to F one, we shift up and then we shift down in parallel, so that it touches the samples. Yeah, it touches the sample. Once it touches the sample, we stop, and then it happens that we have four, five. Six. So in that case, in total, in the F1 design, we have six separators. So these are the separators. That means when we shift F1 up and down, and then so we will meet some samples lying on the shifted F. Yeah. Okay. In this direction too. Once we define these two shifted F, and then so we are going to measure the distance. So this is the distance, Z2. Okay, this is this distance, Z2. So the width right here, that is G Z2. That is the margin or the distance we define for the separator machine. Yeah, At the same for direction one, we are going to shift this dot dash line up and down, we touch these two separators and then shift it down, we touch these three separators. So in this case, for F2, we have five support vectors. Yeah. And then the distance between the shifted F2, we have Z1 right here, we have Z another Z1 right here. So the width that is 2z2, uh, 2z1, sorry. So now when we talk about the optimal or the maximize, the, the maximum margin, when we look at this graphically, we just know that 2z2, that is larger than 2z1. So when we talk about the maximum distance or the margin, and then we will pick Z2. So that means F1X will be the design. Yeah. So this is based on these two requirements to design the supply to machine. And then in the next in, in the next section, we will based on this concept to design the supply wetter machines.